Welcome to an amazing AWS Energy Symposium 2024. I'm Jordan Bloom, Editorial Director with Heart Energy. I'm joined by Brian Morris, Principal Architect for Continental Resources, and Kumar Satyam with PwC. Um, so just to get started, thank you so much for joining us. But you're the biggest private oil and gas producer in North America. You're one of the big four professional services giants. Um, so we know your companies, but can I get y'all to talk a little bit about just what you're focused on and, and why you're here, really? Okay, well, um, we're here to talk about our, our Gen AI journey and, and our AWS journey and how those fit together. And uh, a lot about how we've, um, how, how we evolved from just basic working with data and data platforms and how we did that and how this Gen AI thing is really a revolutionary. Uh, it's the capabilities of it are probably the most disruptive technology that, that I've seen um, in the last, I don't know, 20 years. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, um, I've been doing AI work for the last 20 years. That's my background and a lot of the Gen AI, AI work we do uh, 11 years at PwC. And um, I don't think in my life I've seen something are drastically changing the way people think about as Gen AI has done. And I mean, we have been pretty forefront in Gen AI. I mean, uh, we actually got started on the journey before Chat GPT came in. So we have been seeing what it does. We apply it to ourselves. I mean, uh, and now we're helping clients and I'm, I'm happy to see that Brian and the team, I mean, they got value from what we have done. Yeah, and we were pretty mature with AWS. Uh, we, we implemented, started implementing on AWS in 2017. And uh, we embraced a lot of the technology, the, the object storage uh, capabilities. We use Spark for distributing. Uh, you know, we, we use a lot of technologies to be able to go out and use these cloud native scalable uh, clusters. But when Gen AI came up, what really, when ChatGPT happened, uh, we had to look at what is our strategy? What are we gonna do? And it was all I could do to just try and catch up and that's when we decided we needed to engage with a partner that really had a lot more experience than we did because everything that we'd heard is don't wait. Because if you're, if you're not engaging with Gen AI and figuring out how that can be used for your company, then you're falling behind. And it's not gonna take long before you are no longer as competitive as you once were. And if you know anything about our company, we're competitive, so. Well, I wanted to ask you too, because um, a, a lot of oil and gas producers are doing what they call AI, but it's more predictive analytics, um, things that have been around technology-wise at least for several years. Um, but really pushing ahead with true generative AI is a, a bit more, let's say, pioneering for the industry. So could I get you to maybe elaborate on, on why now and, and why be at the forefront? Yeah, we we'd used so we'd done machine learning, we had done data science, uh, we had implemented that before, but the whole generative AI, the large language models, the, the lang chain, and how do you chain all these operations together, that was something new. And it was almost like magic. How, how do you know what someone's asking for and interpret that? And that's where we get into these models and choosing the right model and and we, we really wanted to build out what the, the infrastructure was and, and what our DevOps was. And I, I think what PwC said is, hey, it's important to do that, but we also want to provide value. Yep. We also want to do short iterations, and, and I don't want to steal your thunder, but it, we want to do short iterations where we're going through and taking an actual business use case, and we're using generative AI to interpret what people are asking, what the intent of that, and leveraging on top of you know, unstructured data, structured data, so data in a database, data, you know, PDFs in, in a knowledge database or a knowledge store and content server or, or SharePoint, whatever. So, I mean, Jordan, I mean, a great question to ask. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for years, right? Um, I think the paradigm shift is uh, when you did the predictive AI stuff, machine learning, classic deep learning stuff, which I've done a lot and I still do, you lead what you call a very advanced data science experience. 
lot of the companies basically, I mean, you don't have like hundreds and two hundreds of those in company usually. One of the paradigm shifts with Gen AI is with all these uh, large language models, you do not require that skill. Mm -hmm. You can use a lot of the technology skills and you can put the technology in the hands of the people who need the technology, like business people. Um, and that's the paradigm shift, okay. That is what actually accelerated a lot. Two, these models are pretty good. It's not like some of the, I mean, noise we have heard, heard about the years, that things are good and doesn't turn out that way. Gen AI is pretty darn good. I mean, we use it for ourselves at PwC. And what you've seen is client is, I mean, if you use it the right way where he was going, um, Brian was, uh, we say pilot proof and scale. Um, if you do the right way, you can generate a lot of values. And that's what, I mean, when we partnered together, I mean, the first thing Brian and we were talking about is we talked about saying, don't do what we call a big bang approach pilot prove and scale prove it to your people that yeah it will work and make the business people actually run with it and let them own it so i think that's the difference okay if you ask me yeah and and we're we're putting things into production we're not just building it and they will come we actually have strong business sponsorship that tie to our core values for the company our first use case really was health and safety and environmental so an hse use case around uh, alerts and standards and bulletins that came out. And how do we make people in the field that are wearing all their PPE and they need access to be able to find something that relates to how to do this operation. Or they remember that there was an alert or a bulletin that that's some other provider, someone else had, had an incident and we wanna make sure that our team is safe because the number one thing that's important to us is everyone goes home, all their fingers and, and toes, we're protecting people, we're protecting the environment. And then large language models, Gen AI, help deliver that to where they can speak in their phone. They can get not just a summary of just what it is, but they actually have the transparency is what we would call it. Transparency to actually see the actual documents, click through and open it up. And they don't have to search through it. Yeah, and the key thing also for him, I mean, um, Brand didn't actually go into a lot more detail they picked the use cases what people wanted and not basically what the technology team wanted, which is basically drives the usage of it and also the two use cases we picked. I mean, I do a work, like I said, across the industry and I see so many times people pick use cases with Gen AI, which are good use cases, but no one wants it. So the, the question of value then comes in after you do it and I mean, that drives not the usage of it. I mean, these folks, they had an innovation session last year and they actually almost had like a prioritized list of use cases that they came out business saying, I want these. And that's where we started with. So I think that's the difference as well. I mean, going by the value, going by what people want, drives the usage a lot. And this is a technology that can really drive value for you, so. And, and they helped us implement it in a way that doesn't require a huge team of new talent to come in there and do it. They're helping us upskill our existing teams. They're building it in a component way. Uh, we meet with them on, on the phone or in person every day and we're partnering together to build something that we can reuse for multiple use cases. So even though we, we delivered you know, two main products or features, uh, a lot of those components are reusable like the AWS platform. A lot of the services and components that you have in AWS, you use them for multiple places. We built it to where it's a plug and play, bolt together parameter driven solution. And you could do all that, but if it's a field of dreams, and nobody's using it, you've done nothing. And so we're actually building things that people are using. So there's obviously multiple different partners y'all could have gone with. Why specifically PwC and AWS, other than having a love of acronyms? TLA is three letter acronyms. Uh, I, I can tell you this. We looked at a lot of small boutique specialty partners and a lot of what we got was a year long, 18 month long project to do, to build out all the, the DevOps strategy and everything else. We didn't end up with a product that someone in the company could use. We ended up with a bunch of IT infrastructure pieces, important, critical, but what we wanted to do is start building that out as we built a product. And so we, we had some guiding principles to begin with and we worked, we worked with PwC and they brought up some things that we didn't know, and that's why you engage a partner. And uh, uh, they did a, a lunch and learn session and explained how you're using it internally. Yeah. And I was super impressed with that. And you didn't come in with, let's do 18 months. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not our way of doing it. I mean, I mean, I would say, I mean, um, these guys have been a good partner. I mean, I was very glad that they were not looking for someone to outsource the work, but with, for someone who can partner with them. And that's what we actually pride ourselves. We are partners to you. We are not an outsourcing firm. You just outsource the staff. And I mean, it, it's uh, I mean, it's both sides, right? Both sides actually has to have a good relationship to work together. I think it was a great relationship. And, and, and uh, thanks to Brian and, and the team and everyone. It's been a pleasure, and I don't often say that, uh, <laughs> with with working with consulting companies, uh, professional services. But but it truly has been a pleasure because they have gone the next level, and we have worked together and said, what if? What, how do we do this? How do we make this learn from itself? How do we provide the feedback? How do we give visibility into, you know, how well is this application performing? How well is are the services? Who's using it? What's the health of the model? We've we've built out an incredible amount in a short time, in 2024, and we did it in in what six to eight weeks? Eight weeks, six weeks uh, sprints, basically. Yeah. So two weeks sprints through that, and yeah, three to four sprints we are done. I mean, then we pilot. Like I said, users uh, come back with feedback. We made small tweaks and roll it out in production. Well, it took you so long. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so what, just uh, you've touched on it some, but if I can get you to maybe elaborate a bit, kind of what were and are the the project goals and be as broad or specific as you want to be? Yeah, well, I would say the, the first, our first project goals was really to satisfy what the business needed we, we were receiving feedback from one of our business customers, our health and safety team, that they needed a better way for the people out in the field to access these documents and get summaries of it and to find it where they didn't have to go back to a truck or to a laptop or anything else. They wanted to be able to just ask a question using their own phrases and get the results. Of all the documentation we put together, you know, there's pictures, there's, there's illustrations, there's, there's standards to use. That, that was the first main thing. From a technology standpoint, from an IT perspective, we were looking to deliver that while still building out the core building blocks that would allow us to reuse those building blocks for the next use case and the next use case and the next use case. And so we really looked at the two big areas that we knew we were gonna have to touch. We we're gonna have to deal with unstructured data. So think of documents, uh, that talk about things and we were going to have to deal with structured data. And so our first one was the health and safety and the second one was really a, a well data query assistant to go through and eliminate the need for people to know SQL. How do we take a, an analyst that knows what, they're, what they need and they can ask the question, but they may not know where to go to find the answer. They may not know how to, how to properly format the SQL and, and you know what what they can do and so i think we built a solution that's far more accurate than we built for innovation day last year and that it 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 learns from itself and we've built enough cool things in it that as we add more subject areas more content for it to look at we can we can push in a lot more things that will make the results immediately faster than what we did but it's it's reusable components or reusable architecture that we can go through. I don't know, it's... Yeah, I mean, so um, Brian talked about the lunch and learn. So what we talked about there is what we learned when we actually, so remember, we started on the journey way back in 2021 and Gen AI, right before the chat GPT came in. In two years, what we learned is something what you require is called a plug-in architecture. And since, think about almost like Lego blocks, you can take one and put it other places. So we talked about that and that's what we applied here. Um, the use case he was talking about, think about the power of it. I mean, the field people right now, they want to know anything about well. They have to go and call their analyst partners and say, hey, can you tell me how much of the I mean, production of oil is there now? No, they don't need that, right? Because in using Gen AI, they can type the question in plain English and get the answer. So the power is now in the hands of the people who really need the data and not in the hands of the analyst who was actually answering the question of the field people. And I think that's what we, we keep on expanding and all, but so and we have tried to make it like a lego block for the lack of words uh, so that in the next one they take it from the well to other areas they can use the same concept and same same structure and not really i mean redo that and aws is pretty good at that so i mean 
that's and, the part of using AWS, right? So. And think about how rapidly Gen AI is evolving. Every day, multiple times a day, there's new models, there's new enhancements that are published, there's new, completely new techniques that, are, that, that people are talking about, and this is better for this, and this is better for that. That's why we did the Lego blocks. Yep. We know going in that what we're using today, we may not use tomorrow or next week. And so that's why we wanted parameter driven capabilities to go through and, and talk to different models to adjust things like token size and a bunch of technical stuff that nobody needs to know unless you're building this stuff. Yep. You helped us build out that parameterized stuff that we need to make it to where we can plug and play these Lego blocks. And, and then we used all the AWS components to be able to keep that secure to be able to make sure that it was it was reusable and scalable out across the environment. So we we did some load testing early on where we had, you know, 80 100 people push and play at the same time asking questions and we watched it scale out to be able to answer that. So we're trying to anticipate what's we're, needed and we yeah. couldn't have done that without your you and Thanks. your team's help phenomenal. Thank you. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks Brian. Very good. Uh, in that vein, what's kind of next on the, the roadmap from here? So we did the two, probably the, the most common use cases that everybody talks about. I mean, we didn't build a chatbot. That's what everyone starts with. Sure. But, but we built to be able to, to, to search and, and categorize and summarize your own data. Uh, we, we keep our data under our control. Uh, you know, that's a big thing. So we've, we've got all of that, but I think the next big thing is how do I implement Gen AI in a transparent way as new features in people's existing workflows and their existing applications? How do I build this out to where I can take someone that, that has been sitting in a seat, working a role for 12 years, how do I take someone that's been in there for two years and make them almost as effective as the person that's 12 years. How do I take that, that knowledge, a lot of the, the tasks that they do, and the way that they do it, how do I use Gen AI to make that, that two-year person as effective and productive as the 12-year person? And then how do I take that 12-year person and, make, and take all of this stuff out? And I think it's gonna be really transparent. I think it's gonna be in two years, three years, four years, uh, you're not going to recognize Gen AI. It's just it. It's just going to be. Um, so I mean, and adding to what Brian said, I mean, we are doing an innovation session like they did last year. We are doing this September, so in a month, we're going to present to again. I mean, we want the pull from the business, right, and maintain the momentum. We're going to say these are the two use cases you had asked for. This is delivered. What next you want? So we want the business to come back and say, guys, do this for me. I need these, okay? I mean, we have ideas of what to do. I mean, uh, we don't have to get into details of what people might ask, but we want business to come to Brian and the team and say, give me this. So you want to come maintain the momentum through the innovation day, showcase what Gen AI can do because, um, you know, I mean, the people have a lot of doubts about what can do and not do. And we can, we want to really show and have people speak about how they're using it, what the, his team has built and then say, guys, this really works. You need to think about it. And we want to be able to quickly prove out, yes, Gen AI is a good, a good solution for this, or no, Gen AI is not. So you've got to not be afraid to fail or fail fast. And, and you don't want to do things in two grand. We, I, I love the whole iterative approach that we did, where you know first we start by proving out capabilities in the raw, and then we start by enhancing those and refining them to make them truly useful and something that's production web. Uh, worthy yeah and in the energy sector we've been in the middle of the you know so-called great crew change of a lot of loss of institutional knowledge so i guess you see this as potentially being a, a big solution there yes exactly it's it's when when i've had conversations with vps and had conversations with other people that's what they're asking for is how do i how do i free up good people to do more and how do i how do i make people that maybe don't have that experience, how do I take that, that IP and, and help them to be productive? It normalizes the knowledge in some sense, yes. not only the use cases, I mean, there are a lot of maintenance use cases, 
where, I mean, like the oil and gas have lost lots of people in COVID, right? I mean, now you have a one-year guy coming in and trying to do what the 20-year veteran can do in his sleep. So this is a tool that will normalize the knowledge, can leverage the knowledge that was, I mean, generated through the 20 years guys doing work and being used now by the one-year-old guy. I mean, it's a great tool. I mean, not because, I mean, we did the work together, we applied to ourselves and we have found great tools. So, I mean, even for PwC, for a lot of stuff we do for ourselves, so. Yeah, that, that's where they came in. But one of the ways you need to start using it to start understanding exactly what it can and can't do, what it's what it really is good at, and and they built from that into you know here's different approaches based on what you're looking for. This is what I recommend, and and they'll find the right people that'll hit the ground running, and and I was I was shocked and amazed. So, I mean, we do what we say, right? So. <laughs> so. It's a good thing. It's yeah. don't build the field of dreams. <laughs> Great. Um, so you definitely talked about it some already, but I wanted to see if you could maybe delve into the details a bit more and just kind of measuring um, successes and milestones and, and how that's going on kind of a data and analytics level. So the, it's very important for me to be able to say to our leadership, we've invested this much time and energy to build out this but if nobody's using it, did we really get the value out of it? If, if it's not speeding up, if it's not helping the business, is it really something we should have been doing? Yep. And so we built in a lot of feedback mechanisms to log out and show not only the health of what we built, but also the usage of what we built and, and the quality of the feedback that we're getting from the business on that. So we have ways to measure quality internally but we're also looking for feedback and providing, getting that from the business to do, to show us, you know, where did you fall short? Where did this solution not give me the results that I anticipated? So one of the things they did good was um, they had business through every step of the process with them. So it was not like you're waiting for five weeks and then you get a feedback. I mean, every week or two, we'll sit down with the, I mean, once we have say one capability developed, we'll go to the business, show them, get the feedback and I mean, make the changes. So having business in the loop and having basically always a discussion about value. What is the value of doing this for you? And you means business, right? End of the day, they are users. That is what I think, I mean, part of it is a success story because now business is saying, yep, I have actually been part of the development. I know what these guys, we have done and I want to use it. And, and it's a cross-functional team. It was, it was people from multiple departments that were part of that to help evaluate and say, yes, this is valuable. Yes, yes, I want this. And not only do I want this, I want more and more and more, which helps build out what the backlog that you're gonna do. And then, you know, how do I stack rank that? How do I determine what the business value of that? What do I work on next? And that's, that's part of an overall strategy, but that's also, you know, what's the next best step to, to build on this solution? What do we have the data to support? What do we need to go get? What, what can we deliver quickly that moves us closer to that end state? And so you've got to be able to iterate through that. You don't have to build it all right now. You can start small and continue to improve, continue to drive engagement with the business. That's where you're gonna get funding, by delivering something, by showing that, that it, there's value, by proving that out. Then your, your company's not afraid to fund that for the next step and the next step. Great. Um, let me ask an AWS question, if you don't mind, yep. just if it, if it gets you to maybe talk about or highlight just kind of the benefits specifically you're seeing from AWS's involvement and um, kind of what exact services y'all are y'all are utilizing. Um, let, let me know if I missed any. So, so, so we've already been a big object storage user, but we use the parameter store. Uh, we use uh, AWS key, KMS, so for key management, that encrypts things that are in the management store. Uh, we're using Claude, uh, which is a data model, Claude 3 Sonnet, uh, to do uh, a, a lot of what we do, specifically with the text to SQL. We use Amazon Titan. Both of these are fit within their bedrock, their Gen AI uh, product lines. We use Titan to do the embedding. And so, and, and I won't go into too much details, but that's, that's where you digitize what your data is. And that's the power behind what allows you to quickly find it. 
without having to do texturing match stuff the old school way. This is much better. Uh, we're using uh, just, just a ton of other, uh, we use CloudWatch to monitor the health of the applications. Uh, I, I could go on, what, what am I missing? Well, I think, I mean, from my perspective, and I use both, I've used both, um, your, I mean, AWS competitors and AWS. I'll tell you the flexibility is there. The bedrock that can basically use, like uh, we, we talked about the Mixtrel and we talked about cloud. Those are two different LLMs. Ability to switch and on and switch off different basically models that you need, given the pace that, I mean, the Gen AI changes, is a good capability AWS has. Obviously the compute cost and all is much cheaper, easy to use. I mean, when I have my team use AWS and a team use the other one, I mean, they always say, oh, the AWS is so good, why am I using the other one? So, I mean, it's easy to use, that's number one. Number two, basically flexibility to change things around because world changes fast. It's not like every 10 years, no, every year it changes. And I mean, three, basically, I mean, uh, I think for the maintenance, right? I think for you guys, it's uh, easy to maintain. I mean, that's as important as building anything because I mean, if you cannot maintain easily, I mean, hard to do anything. It's, it's the whole CI, CD. And we do the, the load balancing, so we're delivering these as services. So we're load balancing that. So we're, we're having multiple servers that auto scale up. There's an auto scaling capability within AWS. So if the load starts to increase, we'll spin up a new instance that'll provide for all of those API calls back and forth. And so the one thing we don't wanna do is impact the user's experience. It should be transparent behind the scenes for them. AWS allows us to do that because they've got all of that that scalability. That they've they've got what you always wanted to have on prem. They've got it. Very cool. Um, let me ask from a PWC standpoint um, <clears throat> because you're talking about how you don't want to outsource, you want to partner. What can PWC offer to other potential partners? And you know. To, to fit their specific solutions, turnkey approach, et cetera. So when you say partners, you mean other providers uh, or other companies like? Other companies. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know how much you know about PwC analytics, data analytics team. I've been part of it big enough. Uh, US itself is 2000 people. So that's not a small size. That's bigger than many IT organizations that exist in the US. We have the depth of the knowledge, not in, only in energy utility, but every sector that you can think about. And I've, I mean, in energy utility, probably between colleagues and I, I would say with like more than 200 years of experience. I've been doing this for 10 years in utility and I'm not an expert. I will still say I'm not an expert even after 10 years of doing data analytics in energy utility. So we bring a lot of depth as well as the breadth. You need to learn from what others are doing. I actually, I mean, do a lot of work in say airlines and all. I say, you guys know everything that every other airline does. Have you looked at what basically Facebook is doing or Intel is doing or someone else is doing? Learn from other people. And that's what I think we are very good at. Two, I think, I mean, like we said, I mean, we do what we say. We believe in design to value, showing values in six, eight weeks, and we'll do that. I do that all the time. I mean, and that's what the partners get from PwC. I mean, we don't go and say, let's do 20 million to start with. Let's prove value, let you get, get confident enough of what we can do, and then we keep on basically expanding and incrementally doing value for you. I think that's what PwC does. I mean. Small manageable chunks, uh, cross-platform. It doesn't matter what platform. Uh, you've got experience in that. We had some questions, some specific questions about how to do something with Databricks, which we use for orchestration. Uh, we're big Spark users. And so we use that, that sits out on Databricks. They know people that, that were able to answer those questions and build in that automation into our, our pipeline for the data ingest for our unstructured data. Just, just phenomenal. We are not here to sell a platform. We are to help you solve problem. I always tell that client, I can work with any platform you have and I, need, I can make sure that your solution is delivered. That's all I mean, that's what we always say. Like with these guys at AWS, I mean, I had no problem with that. I said, yeah, we'll do AWS. It's a great platform, probably 70% of my clients use it. But if you have told me that's another one, I would have still done it. I mean, I'll give you my suggestion, what you might do, but I mean, if you want to use it, I mean, sure, so. Yeah, it's, there's a difference between consulting and supplemental staff. <clears throat> consulting will give you their, their best advice on what you should do, what they see that works really well, what doesn't work. And, and you as a company, you have to be transparent about, well, I think we should do this, or I think we should do that. 
we'll do that. And, and what PwC will do, well, I've seen this work really well, and I think you're gonna have some challenges with this. That's invaluable. Because if you try and do it yourself, you're gonna try three or four things before you know what works. Why not start with someone that knows what works and build out some of the, those foundational knowledge that you need to have, and then start upscaling your team and continue to leverage PwC where it's appropriate for new use cases, new innovative things, uh, new models that come out, and how do you best use those? I mean, we have tried 300 different use cases uh, ourselves. I mean, uh, I always say we have a head start in that sense. We are probably two years ahead of what you're thinking about in Gen AI. And one of my clients I was talking to yesterday, I'm like, you think about a use case, and I would very hard to for me to say I have not done it. I mean, we have 300 use cases we have tried. I mean, we work across the sector, right? So, and I can tell you will it work or not work, and what's the value of it. So. So we bring that experience. I mean, people don't think about us as a big, basically, but we are 2,000 people good. I mean, organization working on it, so. Oh, I thought of you guys as big. I thought <laughs> yeah. of you as too big to use because I was fearful of what we were gonna get, some monstrosity, and that, that you know, 20 million over two years and all of this stuff, and they didn't do that. And I'm thankful for that because we couldn't have sold that. We, we needed something where it was small, measurable, incremental successes that we could build on to continue to build demand, continue to validate that we were moving in the right direction, that we were providing business value. And PwC was right there the whole way. And the team that we had, just phenomenal. And Brian and I always have a discussion about what are you doing internally to make sure that you become self-sufficient at some point of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the companies don't do that. They want to just stick around. I mean, that's not our motto. I mean, we want you guys to be running by yourself and saying, yes, PwC helped us get there. I mean, yeah. So we have a, that discussion all the time. I mean, the so. knowledge transfer, we've, we've got, you know, lots and lots of documentation around what we do, even for the new use case. How do we support this? How does this scale out? What AWS components we're using? What are we using from Databricks? What models? Uh, I think we tried five or six different models. And, you know, we've got the capability to plug and play any of those models in. And now we have the capability to plug in another five or 10 and choose those if we need to without having to build everything from scratch. Yep. So it's again, AWS feature, right? I mean, you can do that. I mean, uh, some of the other ones, they like you to use one versus another, so. Great. Well, now, lastly, I just wanted to see if there's anything else you wanted to highlight about your companies or discuss about the future of Gen AI. Open the floor a little bit more. <laughs> well, we're, we're at the AWS Energy Symposium. So 2024, I just want to say that the, the energy companies that are here and energy companies overall, you, you don't typically think of high tech. You don't tip, typically think of, of all of those things. There is probably no other higher tech industry than, than the energy industry overall. We're, we're not doing a moonshot. We're doing a moonshot below ground and we're doing it safely. And we're trying to, to provide the best, cleanest, safest energy sources that's that's the overall goal of everybody here. How do I do that safely? How do I do that efficiently? How do I I provide value uh, without having to to staff up incredibly? That's 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 what we're doing. Gen AI is I think a core capability that the truly the next generation of companies a few years from now it's not going to be a nice to have. It's going to be a have to have. And so that's why we're here to embrace that technology and talk about this, the small successes, but we've got a lot more planned. Um, as a closing one, I will say, um, you hear a lot of noise about Gen AI being not successful, people not getting value. I tend to disagree. I would say technology is not the failure here. It's the way you use the technology is a failure. We talked about a lot, I designed to value and value. Think about value first, start small, so that you can fail fast if you have to. I mean, and we actually pride in doing that. I mean, um, you heard like me 20 times now saying this, but you have to do that. The technology is there, it will, it works. You just have to think about the right problem and the right way of using it. I mean, we are here, I mean, people want to talk about, I mean, I'm more than welcome to talk about it. I mean, um, my team will joke that I can talk for the whole day about it. So, uh, but trust Gen AI. I would say trust Gen AI, it's a good technology. It will work if you use the right way. 
Great. Well, no, thank you so much for sharing your insights today. Really appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here at the AWS Energy Symposium 2024. Have a great rest of the day.